Call the meeting of the North Syracuse Board of Education to order. Please rise and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to begin with a moment of silence for the following. <clears throat> Charles Organski, a retiree of the North Syracuse Central School District. Paul David Stelmazik, a retiree of the North Syracuse Central School District. Harry Delosh, a graduate of the North Syracuse Central School District. Susan Noble, a graduate of the North Syracuse Central School District. And Edward Griffin, a retiree of the North Syracuse Central School District. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna begin this evening with a presentation from our Human Rights Club. So if you're here, we're gonna turn it right over to you right now. We have a microphone up there, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't think I need this, but uh, I'm Jackie Heyman. I'm a students uh, human rights club advisor, and um, we are missing a couple students. A couple students fall sick really quickly, and so we were just trying to like reorganize. So sorry if we're a little nervous and we're a little jumpy, but um, these kids are amazing. On my worst days, they bring me so much joy um, and make me have faith in our student body and all the good things young people have to offer. So I'll just uh, let them introduce themselves and take this uh, presentation away. Hi, I'm Maddie Radowski. I'm the social media manager of the Human Rights Club. Hello, my name is Ethan Mivas and I'm a new member this year. My name is Lily Mesko and I'm a new member. My name is Nifu Waha, but I'm a new member as well. My name is Emily Bradley and I'm also a new member. So we are the Human Rights Club, and this entire presentation is just to help bring diversity to our schools. Um, I think the most important part about um, being in school is like learning about different cultures and backgrounds. And this is basically just the entire th our entire speech is to help bring that and help realize that we are more diverse than we think we are. Um, so our mission as the Student Human Rights Club is to assure the implementation of both civil and human rights policy within the CNS community um, through advocating for social justice issues while educating the staff and students. We will be able to establish a more inclusive environment and we'll be able to believe that injustice and oppression in our school directly impacts the entirety of the school community. Here are just some things that we accomplished within the past year. Uh, last year during May, we did an Illuminate CNS night to uh, raise awareness for mental health and suicide prevention. We raised over $250, which we donated to a local chapter of the American Suicide Prevention um, Society. We also create monthly bulletin boards for um, months such as AAPI month, Pride month, uh, we recently did one for the land that we live on for indigenous groups, and we also did one for Black History Month, where we did history that you may not have known. We also have created a bunch of websites to promote um, diversity and more knowledge on these subjects, and one of our members who couldn't be here tonight spent a lot of time making a Black Lives Matter and Black History Month website. Okay, so here our club has highlighted the countries that our school represents in blue. Um, and we got this info by issuing a survey to all the English classes in the high school. Um, this we filtered through about 750 responses. And as you can see, about 50% of the map is colored in blue. That's about 60 countries that CNS represents. 
And the reason why this is significant is because we have to make sure that all of these students feel represented and valued at our high school. Um, it's extremely important to have many diverse languages and ethnicities represented in our school because there are many languages and ethnicities in our school. And so in an effort to create a more inclusive school environment, um, the flags will provide representation for our diverse, for our very diverse community, which is what our community deserves. Golden Oh, hi, Golden. <laughs> Represented here are more than just languages and countries. They're the cultures, people, and communities that are united under them. Regardless of how far these flags are from each other, whether it be separated by continents or as close as the Oneida Nation, through buying these flags, we hope to uh, create a way for students to feel heard and represented in our school. There are so many different students in our school that come from different parts of the world and representation is important because it helps people feel like they aren't alone. Being aware of our differences can help us learn more about each other and connect us with people who we can relate to. I myself come from a family where both parents were born and raised in Ghana. So when coming to school, a place that is supposed to celebrate differences, I felt out of place as so many other people were different from me and didn't have the same background, so I wasn't really able to re relate with anyone. So with the help of our mission, we are able to um, help create new communities of people who have the same background and help spread that awareness of diversity. So the specifics of the FLY project is that the flags would go in a common area for all students, which is the cafeteria. The cafeteria is a place where many students from all different backgrounds meet every day, and it is a common area for all. There'd be 64 flags hung up that are um, two feet by three feet, where they'd be seen by all students, adding a necessary reminder of the diversity present in our school. These can be positioned anywhere in the cafeteria and there'd be more details to follow. Um, this is just the nice thing. Thank you. Okay, so I just wanted to reiterate real quick about slide three that y'all just witnessed about what we've accomplished. So as previously stated within our club's mission statement, we strive towards promoting diversity and inclusion to better our school community. That being said, as a newly formed club, we've accomplished many things doing just that. For example, last year, our first organized event was Illuminate CNS. A candlelight event held at the high school, which memorialized students who have passed and also further opened the overlooked conversation regarding the declining mental health of students. Looking at this school's at this past school year, the CNS turned the CNS Human Rights Club created several campaigns spreading awareness of New York's saddened history um, involving the Onondaga Nation and the importance of acknowledging the land that we take for granted. In addition, in the month of February, we created both a bulletin board and a website celebrating Black History Month while um, sharing stories of prominent Black leaders that are overshadowed in our curriculum. And now, our latest endeavor is the North Stars Nations. With this push, our club plans to pur purchase these flags representative of the student body's diverse cultural backgrounds and proudly present them within our school walls. By doing so, we further strive towards promoting diversity and inclusion while listening to over 700 students who eagerly replied to our surveys regarding their cultural backgrounds. So as it was uh, prevalent in our slides, we hope to promote diversity and more inclusion by um, purchasing these flags to provide a more representative school community within CNS. Anything else? Yes. I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you for everything you're doing. Um, it really means a lot to not only the students, but our community as a whole. Um, the impact is already huge and it's just going to keep growing. Um, and I can't wait to visit the cafeteria when to see all these flags because that's just amazing. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Great job, everyone. Uh, the 64 flags are representative of the 64 uh, nations that are within the school district? or yes, yes, but there will be many more as the school year keeps on going on. Good. So you'll, that was my question. Will you be adding flags as new nations 
Of course, as more students um, come to Human Rights Club or, you know, tell some teacher to tell us, or we'll just keep on um, providing out surveys to get more student involvement by telling us their cultural Fantastic. backgrounds. Love it. Thank you. Of course. I have a question for anybody else. Uh, there was a, uh, somewhere over here, a question about, or a statement about you and I just wanted more specifics. You formed communities of students with similar backgrounds. I think you said that, and yeah. so I just wanted to know what what's that look like? Like, what do you you what do you do? And yeah, so how's that work? <laughs> it's just as coming up to the high school, it's really hard to create like new mm -hmm. friends or just people to talk to. And I knew that with the help of this club and other clubs like Umoja, I was able to find people who came from different backgrounds like me and had immigrant parents who were able to share those same. Um, uh, like what are they called like it's experiences okay so that's so not just immigrant parents from ghana but immigrant yeah parents just in general. immigrants so in general share the same experience yeah. okay yeah i just wondered and so you have that group that i don't know if they they meet formally or you just have a group that you know you can connect with in a group that you're able to connect with yeah okay great thank you and this has been about a, about a year so You've all been in, in the high school. What do you what do you do you see? Do you see small changes? Somebody tell me a little bit about what you see has uh, happened or maybe improved because of this. This is I just think this is extremely important. I mean, you all watch the news or you see stuff on social media. This is really important. So I just wonder what you see. It's because we've screwed up, people my age. You you have to you have to fix this. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize on behalf of all the old folks. Yeah. Um, uh, so when I first came up to the high school, seeing of uh, like people who took on like more important roles, like um, National Honor Society president or just other like big on roles who really have like a say in the community, they were usually white people. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think that with the help of this, it will help realize that like we could do so much more people of color and it will help bring people like me or like people of color up to those big rules and help show our diversity through that. Okay. Any, anybody else want to share? Anything? Yeah, yeah, please. I mean, even if you're just walking through the hallway, if you look at one of our bulletins and go, oh yeah, I see that, you know, that's just, that is enough to get it something thinking in your head. And that's part of what our goal is with the bulletins. Okay. I mean, and, and I know I'm flippant, but I, I'm really serious. I mean, I, 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 I've I've seen it. I mean, I grew up in the '60s and '70s. I, I feel like we've gone backwards, and I find it really disturbing. And I'm disturbed that we can't even talk about certain things now without labels being thrown at us. And so I think this is really, really cool and really important. And I commend you for doing this. And just keep try keep plugging along, no matter what. Please, please, thank you. Can I ask, like, how many roughly kids are in the group, and do you meet like once a week or? Uh, yes, there's about 20 of us, I would like to say, but we're also involved in a lot of other clubs such as Umoja, like Principal's Cabinet, National Honor Society. Um, ironically, I'm in all of them, yes. but like, we have to talk about that. <laughs> but yes, we meet once a week and it's on Mondays. We decided that Mondays is just like better fitting for our schedule. But basically our meetings kind of consist of us sitting down around a big table, kind of like a great Thanksgiving type of energy, but um, we sit around, we talk about like stuff, five minutes what's happening uh, in our lives. We eat snacks that Miss Hammond thankfully provides for us. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Hammond. And we just talk about what's going on in our life, what's going on in current events, and just, you know, get some stuff off our chest. And then we go straight into the business, like such as um, presenting this sideshow about North Stars Nations or working on our period project, Project P, or go with the flow, or even just wanting to talk to the principal about, I don't know, how we can better our school community. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. I'd like to piggyback on Paul, just to say that, thank you. Stay strong. And I hope that when you're done with your career at, at CNS, that you'll take it with you and spread this as you, as you grow and become old folks like us. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And come back, <laughs> come back anytime. Let us know. How I would love to. Thank you. Good luck too. She just said that was fun for the record. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, we have the 2022-2023 athletics presentation. So, Mr. Benarski, take over. All right. Good evening. Thanks uh, for the opportunity to be here tonight to share the successes uh, within the athletic department uh, for the 22-23 school year. Um, before I start, I would like to show a quick little video recapping CNS Athletics this year. Coming back after a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic, there was a concern that our student-athletes might have trouble adapting with pandemic learning loss and surging mental health problems. It wouldn't be a surprise to see our students taken aback. But backing down just isn't the North Star way. From the basketball court to the soccer field, our athletes have demonstrated their unwavering commitment and resilience. Parents, teachers, friends, and the entire CNS community have come together to support and encourage these extraordinary young men and women. How strong was our North Star comeback? Our marching band went back to the New York State Championships to once again represent our school with dignity. Our CNS varsity wrestling team was able to bring home a Section 3 title for the first time in school history. And our North Star men's soccer team went all the way to the New York State Final Four game. To top it all off, the CNS North Star Network is growing bigger with every broadcast. From garnering over 1,000 viewers in a single match, to calling professional games at NBT Bank Stadium, to meeting ESPN legend and CNS alum Beth Mowens, the network is only going up from here. They've passionately captured the exhilaration, the victories, and the essence of CNS athletics, bringing the spirit of competition to every viewer. Through athletics, our students learn the value of teamwork, discipline, perseverance, and leadership. They understand the power of setting goals, facing challenges head on, and celebrating both victories and defeats. We know we're not alone in feeling gratitude towards our team's accomplishments, and we know you'll be joining us and cheering on our students for many years to come. So as you can see, it was a great year. Um, we were fortunate to capture seven sectional three titles, seven league championships, three New York State Final Four, a state runner-up in field hockey, state championship runners in indoor, and hopefully some more this weekend as they go down to Middletown. And um, as mentioned in the video, state championship in March. Um, while this was all happening, uh, we had a group of students that was able to capture this all live from our stadium, baseball, um, Michael J. Bragman, as it mentioned in the video, NBT, they, they were everywhere. And they brought these, these games to people all over the state, all over the country. I can't tell you how many compliments I have received about these group of students that are here tonight. And um, I asked Mr. Bowles to bring them tonight to honor them, as I think it's well-deserved for all their hard work and dedication with the North Star Network. They, um, they... I believe are the only broadcasting group in section three. Um, but if there, if there is another one, they're not as good as ours. They are outstanding. The preparation, um, the homework they do on other teams this weekend, we hosted regional um, lacrosse. It wasn't even CNS and they prepared themselves for these teams on uh, a short time notice. And if you listen to them, they know like they've been uh, broadcasting them all year long. Um, what's also interesting if you do or have ever watched them is they always seem to amaze me with the improvements that they've made um, from uh, replay to special live guest. I mean, they even had Mr. Uh, Crabtree climbing up on the roof to do a broadcast this year. <laughs> And Mr. Bowles, that's correct. Um, they do pre and post interviews with students and coaches and, and our student athletes and our students uh, love uh, 
the attention of getting interviewed by by the crew. So I look forward to watching this grow. And that's my goal as the athletic director is to continue this and make it better, bigger and better. This group will be gone in a few years, but um, we want to continue to to have it grow. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to see them, um, all of our games are archived on our website um, under the media tab. Uh, just go in and, and watch the broadcast. It looks like something on ESPN. So these individuals' uh, futures are bright in the broadcasting uh, world, and I look forward to watching them grow. And I do have to mention two individuals, Kyle Marchak and G Giovanni Heater, who kind of started this during COVID. And um, they just received a first and second team All-American honors at uh, Virginia Tech University in, in the broadcasting field. And it was honored by, I think it was Jim Nance's award. So um, it, it's working and uh, these these students have uh, are going to have a great futures in, in the broadcasting world. So at this time, I would like to call those those students up and present them with a certificate of achievement um, and for all their hard work and dedication with the North Star Network. First, we have Joe Seidman. Emily Porter. Landon Cook. Hunter Bajuska. Drew Mediasic. Emma Hall. Aaron Tarquinio. Congratulations. Uh, one student absent tonight is Luke Bellinger. And last but not least, Johnny Lisi. And one more individual I'd like to honor is um, uh, the teacher of the sports media class who also is kind of my go-to and uh, um, helps me organize this group and getting the kids motivated to make the changes. And uh, I appreciate all his hard work and his friendship. And that's Mr. Mark Vanette. Thank you. So how about one more round of applause for these students? I'd ask them if they want to say something, but they like to talk. So we'll 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 let that go. If you guys would go out in the hall after and we'll get we'll get a couple of pictures. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes, absolutely. Uh, before you go out, Tim, your leadership, um, you know, a lot of Xavier, by the way, was also um online uh at a basketball game, but your leadership, your secretary have made the North Star Nation amazing. Um, even if they don't win, they make us proud. They make our district very proud. And thank you for your leadership, but also your secretary. And I know we're gonna do even better. Thank you. I'm going on <laughs> Yeah, pretty high up. <laughs> hey, thank you.
So I know, please don't feel badly as people leave just before the school. school. I know we have a school accountability presentation and I am, I am excited about this. And um, so Donna Marie, thank you. Please, when you're ready, it's all yours. Got it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, so for some of the newer board members, my name is Donna Marie Norton. Uh, official title is Executive Director of Data and Accountability. And every year I come to the board and, um, well, except for the past two years, because it was crazy, um, and give an accountability presentation. So that's what this is about. So... Why do we have it? Uh, what is um, the accountability regulation. Um, this is tied to the Every Student Succeeds Act, which is also known as ESSA, and it was preceded by uh, No Child Left Behind, NCLB. So in 2015, this new law um, was enacted. And honestly, it's how uh, the New York State Education Department and uh, the U.S. Department of Education hold schools accountable. That's the basics. But things are new. <laughs> Because of the pandemic, and you're going to hear me say that over and over again, and um, the lack of testing or the scattering of testing or the exemptions with testing uh, that we've had over the past couple of years, what I'm going to present to you is really only a one-year model. Um, I can't say that this is how it's going to continue, but I'm just going to tell you how they um, graded schools this year. And that is based on the 21-22 data because there really wasn't anything in 1920 and there was very little in 2021. So we were on pause for a couple of years. So what did they get rid of? And every year I come here and I give you the different categories. So I'm going to go through them just a little bit to kind of reteach you. Sorry. Um, first thing they got rid of was growth. Uh, growth measures on our school accountability uh, are when you compare a student's test score from say grade three the prior year to grade four the next year. And since we had sporadic testing, growth is out the window for this one year. Um, you will see later on that it is coming back, but it's going to be for information only next year. And then maybe after that, they'll kick it back in again. Um, CCCR is really only a high school metric. Um, and that is college and career ready, college career and civic readiness. Um, and they threw that out. So we're not having that this year. They said that there was too much missing data. Um, really, it was because of the region's exemptions. Um, so we just don't have it this year. That one's definitely coming back. Um, academic progress was when state ed set targets that you had to meet. Um, and the idea was over so many years, the targets would increase, increase, increase until all students were reaching the targets. Um, and there have been multiple resets on that over the years that I've had this position. So um, lots of data was missing, therefore progress is out. And then performance is still in, but it's gonna look very different. So what stayed? Graduation rate. State Ed decided that graduation rate was a pretty reliable, we still had it, even though students were exempt from many of the exams and things that they needed uh, to pass, um, we still had students graduate, so that was kept. Um, ELP, um, English Language Learners, State Ed felt that that data was valid, and that is how we test students' progress in learning English. Chronic absenteeism is still in the mix, um, unfortunately, and we did see skyrocketing absenteeism during the pandemic and even after. You know, we didn't want students to come to school when they felt sick. Um, State Ed reset some of the targets for this, expecting that the numbers were going to be high. Um, and then performance again. There it is, um, but it's going to be a slightly different way to look at it. They actually took performance and split it into two different categories. So we're talking about how students perform on those three through eight exams, on uh, the ELA regents and on math regents. So that's what they're looking at. Um, 
they split it into two categories, one called weighted performance and one called core performance. Weighted performance is everyone who should have tested. So as you might recall, a few years ago, we had more of um, a movement of students refusing to test, um, sometimes called the opt-out movement, um, it had different names. And you are expected to test all of your students. So the entire denominator uh, would be your student population in the weighted area. Core, and I think this is kind of a gift, um, and I'm hoping that it stays, core is only the students that actually took the exam. And those two categories were given equal weight for this year. I'd love to see that stay. I can't say it's going to, but it would be great. So after the students take the test and all these metrics are configured, you know, how do they rank the schools? And that's the next slide. So each school is given a one through four score on each of these categories. And the way that they do it is they take all of the test scores, all of the absent data, all of the graduation rate, and they look at your district, your school ranked to all the other schools that are in New York State. Those that are in the lowest 10% earn a one. Those that are 10.1 to 50, look at the range in that. The data girl in me loses my mind when I see unequal ranges like this. That's a two. Um, 50.1 to 75 is a three. And then uh, any school that's in that top 25% uh, earns a four for those particular categories. Okay. So the two things that you can get on the list for are if your students are underperforming in a particular subgroup, consistently over two years, and that's called a TSI school, or if your all student category is underperforming for two consecutive years, and that's the CSI category. You don't wanna be CSI. So how did we do? The whole district, all of the students that took the exams, um, these are the scores, so core, a two, weighted a two, ELP a four, chronic absenteeism a two, and grad rate a two. And then each of the individual schools, I'm just gonna go through each one quickly. I'm not gonna read them to you, you can see them. Um, and basically what NYSED State Ed is looking at is, did the schools make progress? So honestly, the numbers on the left-hand side are not as important as how they compared them to the numbers that they were before. So Allen Road is considered a school who made progress. They're not gonna be in a TSI category. They're not gonna be in a CSI category. They're fine. Same thing with Bear Road. Even though those numbers are slightly lower, they're improvements over what they were before. So as long as you're showing progress, you don't end up on the list. So no TSI, no CSI. Okay, Cicero L, slightly better. Lakeshore. Roxell was great news. And if you had been around here when they got off of the list because they had been labeled as a CSI, a comprehensive uh, support school, um, huge celebration for the schools that were in prior categories. And Roxell is currently off the list. Now we need to watch and we certainly need to improve but they're making progress. And that's what is um, that's what counts right now in state ed. The old model, Paul, you might remember in NCLB was not about progress, okay? So it's kind of nice to see this. <laughs> Smith Road made progress. Gillette Road's doing fine. Rocks Middle also get off, got off the list. I wish I had been at that meeting. I heard the celebration was huge. I had a conflict and I couldn't go. Um, but to see these, the two schools, Roxell and Rocks Middle come off the list uh, was quite a celebration in those buildings. So definitely showing progress. North Syracuse Junior High School is still on the list. So they are a lower category, a TSI school district. And we'll talk about why uh, near the end of the presentation. So there are one school right now that is still on the list as a TSI. Uh, and the high school did fine too. So overall, what it means, well, there should be a little green check there. There we go. Okay. Rocks Middle, no longer TSI. Rocks L, no longer CSI. And that the junior high is currently a TSI building. So specific areas of concern. And these are interesting. We've had lots of talk about these. Um, our African-American subgroup, the core and the weighted uh, were both too low. 
And Dan and I talked about this presentation before I got it. I'm going to give you a little bit of extra information that's not in the slides. Um, and this is a small subgroup of students, but out of the 26 students that fall into the African-American subgroup, only 15 took the math test. So our participation rate is very low, okay? and that hurts. Um, out of those 15 students, no one earned a three or a four. No one was proficient that took the test. Um, in ELA, we had slightly more, 19 out of the 27 kids at that time took the test, um, but only one student was proficient. So it really shows you where you need to target you know, some of your resources. Okay. Participation rate of all students actually is, is overall a concern. Um, and it definitely falls off. It seems like third and fourth grade, more compliant. Um, and then as you get up into the older grades, uh, especially eighth, our participation rate really takes a nosedive. We saw increased um, numbers of students taking the test this year. The administration, the teachers were very encouraging um, and really um, pushing kids a little bit to, to take those exams, which is going to help us, I think, when this data for 22-23 comes out. Okay. We also need to look at the attendance of students in the subgroups of African-American, Hispanic, and economically disadvantaged um, students in poverty because we still have high chronic absenteeism in, in those subgroups, and you are held accountable for it. So what does the future hold? Like I said in, before, growth uh, will come back next year. It's for our information only, and then I believe the year after that we'll be held accountable for it. Um, right now, the exit criteria, so for the junior high, and Dan and I were celebrating this a little bit earlier, for the junior high to get off of the TSI list, they really only need one good year. Usually it's two. So we're getting a little gift um, this year because of the pandemic. So we think the students did well on the exams this spring. When the data comes in, unfortunately, it's very late when the data comes in, which bothers some. Anyway, um, one year to the good, and they'll be able to get off the, the list. They're going to reset those targets based on the newest data from, from this year. Um, and right now, there are no new CSI or um, TSI schools that will be uh, labeled um, for the upcoming school year. So that's it. Do you have any questions for me? I know, questions. riveting stuff, right? Well, that the ranking, the one through four, you had a slide that, you know, the one you didn't like, the uh, un the uneven numbers. Mm -hmm. That that this is a new this is new in ESSA. How how long yep, have they it's been, been using that kind of? I can find it. I did, there's not a number on it. I tell you what slide. That one. Yep. When did they? When did we start? Or they? Or whoever? We 2015. Are. That's been used since then. Yep. So. In order, I mean, we're we're talking about looking for improvement. We're rated against every other school. Every other school, and your demographic, poverty, ethnic, none of that matters. You're just because I look blank at, the, look at the, the the CNS graduation rate. I look at it when we get that data. I think it's fantastic. It is, and our high school has actually been a reward school, a recognition school. So we've been on the a high list. But What's amazing is when you go from eighth grade um, to eleventh, tenth grade when they're taking regents exams. I, Sometimes I think it's the kids not taking the exam seriously. In eighth grade? Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's, but that's been a thing forever. It is. I mean, the 11th, like ELA, for example, right? The 11th grade data is always really good, and the eighth grade data slumps. Yes, everybody but if you look at this, we need to make it better than everybody else. Yeah, I don't like that. I know. Just, <laughs> that's a, Me neither, that's Paul. That's <laughs> the, point, the point I'm making. I, I, don't, I don't understand that system. I hope it changes. That's, I understand it. I don't care for it i'll stop i only dabbled in the data world briefly with annette as you remember i do remember Scratch we were in the same surface. meetings so i got a question right sure. um so with the individual schools how many students does a school need to qualify for the elp set category 30 30 okay. yep. how many so how far off 30. are we on all the other schools is it, it is it how far off are we on the schools that are like not um Oh, I don't, I don't know. Um, I just know when it reaches that 30 threshold, because then I get the, the data. Yeah, I don't know. And our ELP uh, numbers are rising. Here's my question. Is the lack of participation, is that, do you think it's intentional? Like, or is it like, I assume that's a parent decision, not a kid decision, right? It, it actually like can be both. So we've had parents that have sent letters in um, saying that their students aren't going to be taking exams. Um, and then we've had kids on the day of the exam say, I'm not taking it. And the student 
honestly has always had the right to refuse those exams because they don't have any connection to their grades mm -hmm. or their achievement. It's really um, a test of the program, not of the, that individual student. I think if I'm wrong, these exams are a little different than the ones people were highly boycotting like five or six years ago, or they're not they're the same. It's a actually, I mean, it's the same system. It's a different vendor right now. Um, it's been Pearson, Questar, back to Pearson. So, you know, the vendor changes and, you know, the complaint has been how many teachers are on those committees that are creating those exams, or is it just psychometricians that are creating those exams? Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Silence means we're all good now. <laughs> Riveting. I know. No, that was, it was, it was interesting. I understand a little bit more every time. Individuals wishing to address the board. Board of Education Committee reports. I will go to, we have a lot of stuff on policy. So tell me what you've brought to us today, Mr. Thorne. Uh, certainly, Mr. Fafalia. Um, <laughs> on tonight's agenda, we have, uh, I don't know if it's a record, but 10 policies, including three first reads. So hopefully uh, everyone has uh, had a chance to peruse those. Uh, our next policy committee meeting will be the 20th of June. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Crabtree, legislative news. There's, there's no report, but uh, on Wednesday, we will be celebrating all the work that this administration has done, uh, NSCA, teachers and everybody for a great year of, of getting funding for this school district. Thank you, superintendent's comments. Okay, um, as you can see from the presentations from the Human Rights and the North Star Network, we have some of the best students in the county, um, bar none. Um, our students are top notch and I will put them up against anyone else. And uh, Mr. Bednarski uh, referenced some previous students that are now at the college level and they are also performing at a high level. But wherever I go with the North Star Network, people outside of New York are talking about what our kids are doing um, now. and they're 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 blazing a path for themselves for the future and uh, they're excited and it's only gaining momentum and you saw the students um with the human rights i can't wait to see the flags when they're up um if you went to the festival of nations and i know a few of uh, you went the the pride that was there in that room of students and families about their culture was amazing so just want to again acknowledge them again um, and uh, what Jackie Heyman and Tim Bednarski have done with both groups. Uh, this past weekend, um, there was a, a fair, Roxboro Fun Fair, down um, uh, on Saturday from 11 to 4. Uh, a lot of vendors in the community. It was a great event. Um, people loved uh, dunking the principal in the dunk tank, but um, they were raising money, uh, again, for uh, their playground to be all-inclusive. Um, I will, uh, again, mention... Uh, way back when I was a principal down there, but um, at the time, our, the playground we put in had wood chips for the flooring. It is not accessible for all. They are trying to make sure everything that they do, when we talk about our mission statement, when we say all, we're trying to make sure everyone's included. So it was a great event, and I want to thank, uh, thank the community. Um, we had awards night on Thursday for uh, at the high school. Again, many parents and students. It was a great uh, event. Um, I want to commend um, uh, Mr. Nephew and uh, Ms. Herrera for the retirement reception. Again, uh, each year we try to tweak it to get uh, a little bit better to recognize all the talent that, that was there and that unfortunately is leaving us and hopefully they'll come back and sub. Um, the one thing I don't know if you realize, but um, the students that were here tonight how they were dressed, they take their jobs and the things that they do very seriously. Um, they're professional in every step of the way, and that's how we're instructing them so that when they leave here, they're going to go out and be successful. And uh, there are just little nuances that uh, we're trying to make sure that we instill in our students because we want to make sure 
we have the best that we're putting out there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. Board of Education comments. Okay, yep. Beth will appreciate this. Um, I was invited to Lakeshore a couple weeks ago to read to kindergarten students, and I received this today. I know, Beth, how much, you know, I read A House for a per Hermit Crab, and they sent me this, and all signed it. That's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crabtree. Okay, I have I have comments. Just that it's uh, Miss Kruger's last board meeting today, and uh, so I want Terry. I wanted to thank you. I mean, you know, we're nine folks that are kind of diverse. We all have different backgrounds and uh, different perspectives, and so I want you to know. I, I mean, it says here in the plaque, it's been five years. Huh? Uh, thank you for what you've brought to the table. Thank you for the time you've given us. It's uh, been really clear just from listening to you that you care about our students. You care about their well-being and their mental health. That's uh, been made very clear. So I thank you for that. Please know, uh, I know I'll miss you. I'm sure I'm speaking for the board that, that you'll be missed. So we have a little plaque for you. And then when we're trudging through executive session, we will have cake. Um, I'm going to read this though. I read, I, we did this for Mary last year and I love this, this quote and an inner light, no matter how faint when nurtured by knowledge, truth, patience, and belief grows bright through education and can light a child's way for a lifetime. So this is in recognition and appreciation for your dedication, hard work, and caring for the students, staff members, and community member of the North Syracuse Central School District. So thank you. So I'll bring that to you. You. you guys are too sweet. I was not expecting this and I'm trying to fight tears. As you can see, it was very sweet of you. It's meant so much to me um, with child advocacy being at the heart of why I wanted to be on the board. Uh, the court appointed special advocate for children was, it, I like to say, too close to the fire. Um, you got to see actually how individually, you know, face to face, how these kids were harmed by their surroundings. And being on the Board of Education, I got to have an effect on multiple children's lives, not just one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, you know, not being able to see the direct effect, but still knowing that the one was made. And I am definitely gonna miss every single one of you. So, and I really appreciate my time here. Thank you. Thank you too. Okay, if I could get a motion for consideration of approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the board on May 22nd, 2023. Dr. Kramer, motion set from Mr. Thorne. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That is carried. A motion to place items B, C, and D together, please. Motion from Mr. Marizio, second from Mrs. Agru. These are the classification and place for the disabled students for school, preschool, and home instruction. There before us. Any questions? Because seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That is carried. We have a vehicle bonding resolution. Can I get a motion to place that before us, please? Motion from Mr. Moody Wuzik, second from Ms. Kruger. That's before us. Any discussion? And I was explained to us in Friday letter, but if there's no discussion, we have a roll call vote for that. Call for failure, President. Aye. Michael Maurizio, Vice President. Aye. Robert Crabtree. Aye. Matthew Herman. Aye. Beth Kramer. Aye. Terry Kruger. Aye. Xavier Lee Aye. Amanda Segru. Aye. And Mark Thorne. Aye. Okay, thank you. That is that is carried. Thank you very much. Acknowledgement of a gift. Motion, please, for that. Motion from Dr. Kramer, sec from Ms. Kruger. That is before us. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, thank you, that is carried. C, resolution to authorize appraisals. Again, this will be a roll call vote, but we need a motion to put this before us. Motion from Dr. Kramer, second from Mr. Thorne. That is before us, questions, comments? Okay, 
yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I was just going to say what Mr. Um, <laughs> Keegan would say if he was here. I mean, we, had, we it was explained to us these are the um, the assessment challenges that we have. We're getting the third party or whatever you want to call that assessment that's being split with us and the other Municipal. municipalities. Think of the other parties. I was going to say. See, we need Don here because I'm babbling and not making any sense. That's before us. Yes, go ahead. Offer Falia, President. Aye. Michael Marizio, Vice President. Yes. Robert Crabtree. Aye. Matthew Herman. Aye. Beth Kramer. Aye. Terry Kruger. Aye. Aye. Amanda Segrew. Aye. And Mark Dorn. Okay, that is carried. Thank you. D, request for grades, uh, the approval of the grade five through eight ELA textbook. A motion, please. Approve a motion from Ms. Kruger, second from Mr. Moody Wooza. Question, discussion, comments. Okay, all in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Resolution to modify teacher aid position at Allen Road. Please, a motion to place that. Motion, Mr. Thorne, second from Dr. Kramer. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Resolution to create a half FTE school psychologist at Smith Road. Motion from Mr. Marizio, second from Ms. Segru. That is before us. Any discussion, questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. And G, a resolution to ratify attached agreement. Motion from Ms. Kruger, second from Mr. Moody Wuzik. Thank you. That is before us. All in favor? Opposed? That item is carried. I'd like to take uh, the policy items uh, H through Q, if I could, all together. If we need somebody to make a motion for that, motion for Mr. Thorne, second for Ms. Kruger. Okay, we have 10 policies before us. Anybody need to pull one out or discuss anyone in there or question about anything? Okay. All in favor? Posts and those are all carried. Some will be back to us for the second reading. And motion, please, for R, the establishment of our annual organizational meeting date. Motion from Mr. Moody Wuzik, second from Ms. Kruger. And we see that as a first date of July 10th, 2023. Okay, all in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Just a quick, uh, not a quick, but I won't give it the proper time, recognition of three retirements that came in. They're in Schedules A and I believe, yeah, they're all in Schedule A. Tammy Gondek, teaching assistant, retiring with 18 years of service. Deborah Murray, teaching assistant, retiring with 18.2 years of service. And Aaron O'Toole, English teacher, retires with 24.3 years of service. So thank you to them for their service and we'll be seeing them in next year's retirement event, I hope. Instructional personnel report A, please. A motion to place that before us. Motion from Mr. Thorne, second from Ms. Segru. A is before us, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Support staff personnel B, please. Motion to place that before us. Yes. From Mr. Marizio, second from Ms. Kruger. B is before us. Questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, that is carried. An administrative personnel report C, a motion place that before us, please. Motion from Mr. Marizio, second from Mr. Crabtree. That is before us. No discussion, all in favor? I I okay, I was gonna comment after. Oh, you're go. gonna comment after, okay, go. You probably should do it now, but suspense. All right. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed, that is carried. And congratulations, Katie Reeve, who's with us. Thank you. I think some of you, I think most of us got a, a chance to meet her today. Did you want to add anything? Please? Okay. I've known Catherine for, uh, Katie, sorry, uh, for a couple of years. And um, her ability to work with special needs kids is amazing. Um, she treats each uh, student individually, and she knows them. And I know she's going to bring this to North Syracuse. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm going to make a motion for executive session. I'll ask for a second. The motion's to move in for the purpose of receiving an update on negotiations regarding non-affiliates, to receive an update regarding two legal matters with no action to follow, and have a brief workshop regarding an, the upcoming superintendent's evaluation. Second, please. Second from Mr. Moody Buzik. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. And a motion to adjourn. Motion from Mr. Thorne, second from Mr. Marizio. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you.